Something is pretending to be my friend. Part 3 by Spartan School So much has happened since the last update. I'm just going to dive right in. After I sent the previous post, I decided to follow up on some advice a few people had left. I loaded up Facebook. My messages were empty. The previous message sat there, proof that whatever was parading around the campsite was not my friend. I decided to confirm this. I sent a message to the account. I wanted to sound innocent, like nothing weird was going on, in case the monster was the one monitoring it. I knew it liked to play games. My message basically said, Hey man, I hope you're having fun. In retrospect, it was stupid. If the pretend David was monitoring the page, it would easily figure out I was onto it. Also, I looked at his profile. There were no photos or updates dating after shortly before I left for camp. Unusual for a teenager, but I was basically praying at this point that David was out there and could maybe guess why this was happening and help. The monster took his form. I figured there might be a reason. I was doing all this snooping, and it distracted me. When I heard the truck coming into the campground, I snapped out of my daze. I was in the zone now. Being active gave me strength. I quickly logged out of the computer and ran outside. It was still early, so the campers and counselors were in bed. The native man climbed from his truck and approached me. Paul, the supervisor, came jogging out from the trailhead. He's the morning workout kind of guy, I guess. Hey, John, started Paul. You don't look well. Another attack? John sighed deeply and pinched his nose between his thumb and index finger. His voice was deep and quiet. It's the fifth one. We've lost more people this month than in the last decade. Something is wrong with the animals. People get attacked sometimes, but this is bad. You need to close the camp. Send these kids home. It isn't safe. I guess because I knew about David, I could feel the lie. Paul can get serious when he needs. He nodded his head and ran into the office to get the other supervisor. I was standing with John. He had turned and was resting his elbow on the hood of his truck. To his back, I whispered that I knew the truth, that it wasn't animals. His back tensed up. Finally, I had broken my silence about it. I got excited. I quickly spat out what I'd seen David do the previous two nights. My heart was racing. I felt afraid to be talking about it so near the monster, but I kept an eye on the counselor cabin as I spoke. John turned and looked at me solemnly. My heart sank as he spoke his reply. I have no idea what you're talking about. He trailed off part way through and looked over my shoulder, towards the cabin where David was sleeping. My gaze followed, and David was there in the doorway. He was staring at us, but he looked different, pale, thin, and afraid. He wheeled around and slammed the door shut. I was frightened. Tension was building. I felt something was about to happen. I turned back as John grabbed my shirt. Your friend is gone. I saw its face. You people need to leave this place before it's too late. John flew into his truck and tore away. A few seconds later, I'm alone and shaking. The two supervisors came out of the office and were heading towards me, presumably to ask me where John was going. I heard the door to the counselor's cabin rip open. I turned to the side of David marching towards me in the same fashion he used in the woods and at night. Panic was setting in again. As I looked back and forth between David and the two supervisors, something caught my eye. Matt, the young boy that David had done something to, was staring at me through the boy's cabin window. This was the final thread. Something inside snapped, and I finally did the responsible and reasonable thing. I turned and ran. We have a couple of trucks that are designated for camp use. They usually keep the keys inside. I didn't look back as I sprinted to the parking lot, hopped into a truck, and slammed the pedal down. After I rounded a few corners, my head started to clear. I had a decision to make. I could just leave everyone out here and drive home. I probably didn't have enough gas, but I could have made it pretty far. My other choice was to try to get help. I knew the police would call me crazy. Hell, I'm still not sure on that. I settled on going to the nearby native reserve. John obviously knew about what was happening, and I figured he was my best bet. As I turned in the general direction of the reserve, something in the forest caught my eye. 
It was dark, and moving quickly alongside the truck, I looked back at the road and saw a man standing in my path. At this point, I was certain I didn't care anymore. I was planning on hitting the damn person or thing, whatever it was. As I got near, I could feel the same ulterior force I had felt all through the madness, challenging me to pull the wheel to the side to avoid the man who I did not recognize. The next thing I knew, I had ripped the wheel to the side and was crashing through the brush. The truck wasn't the most beastly vehicle ever made, but it went a fair distance through some thick growth before it wrapped around a tree. The driving away from horrific things cliche stopped there. I wasn't desperately injured or stuck in any way. I was pretty far from camp at this point, far enough that David should not have been near me. I considered going up to the road, but remembering that something had driven me off, I decided it would be better to trust the woods. I had lots of daylight left, and so far nothing too crazy had happened during the day. Fear was still seeping into my mind, clouding my judgment. I was convinced that it was the end for me. I'm an experienced woodsman, and could barely keep up with David when he was stalking Matt. He would find me. I was so confused. What ran me off the road, and why? Were there others like David that were working together? I pondered the whole thing while making my way through the brush. Every sound I made agonized me, and everything I heard made my heart race. Paranoia and panic can be dangerous. I was so caught up in my thoughts that I nearly didn't notice that I had wandered into sight range of a small building in a clearing. I dropped to my stomach. One thing that was happening through all these trials was that my reactions were getting good. I was so on edge. I felt spread too thin. I heard nothing for a few minutes, so I slowly crept closer. It was a small wooden cabin in the middle of nowhere. Great, no way that can be bad, right? Never mind, I'm being haunted by some sort of doppelganger with a passion for interpretive dance and sacrificing children's souls. And slowly, I approached the building, figuring at this point, I'm already on the knife edge. Why not push my luck a little further? I was at the rear of the building, they had plain, straight walls, no windows. I decided it would be best to circumnavigate the building in the woods and scout it out. Felt good to have an objective besides don't die. I saw nothing. Nothing was moving. There was no unusual sounds. The single door was open a crack, no locks. I was afraid as usual, but I felt the pulling sensation again. I stood and started walking towards the door. I pushed the door open. It swung inward. I was immediately assaulted with a horrid smell. Not blood this time. Rot. Death. I covered my nose and mouth with my shirt, biting back the urge to vomit. Slowly I made my way into the room. The sunlight only lit a small section of the floor, but I noticed a chain hanging from the roof. The lights flickered on, revealing two things. The smell prepared me for the first sight. A corpse. Its hands were chained to the roof. It looked thin and decrepit. The lights caused a fleet of flies to launch from their meal and buzz around in droves. That nearly made me lose my mind. I can still hear them as I type this. The other thing I saw, I was not expecting. A small table with a laptop on it. I was pulled to the item. Something that if I had seen in a Starbucks back home, I wouldn't have even noticed it. Out here, it represented an alien and terrifying feeling. I pulled open the screen with shaking hands, not knowing what to expect, but unable to resist. The web page was open. It was Facebook. The profile had one unread message. It was from me. This was David's Facebook. I quickly realized the corpse sitting not five feet from me was my friend. He was gone. I couldn't fight it back anymore. The sick sprayed from my mouth onto the floor, splashing on my shoes. The vomit actually cleared my head slightly. I was still heaving, but I had a rare moment of clarity. First, I just made a lot more noise than I was comfortable with. The second, I left evidence that I'd been here. Whatever that monster was, it would know. I turned just in time for the door to be kicked open. A light blinded me. My stomach dropped and I froze. I've been looking for you. A familiar voice whispered as my eyes adjusted to the light. John stood in the doorway. He put a calm hand on my shoulder and led me out into the dusk. I felt like I was dreaming. I followed John willingly, not having any idea what he was doing here, or 
if he was involved in the dead body of my friend that sat in the cabin. I just couldn't contemplate things anymore. I had reached my limit. Exhaustion and fear can take a mean toll. He led me through the brush, quickly and quietly, only stopping occasionally to listen. Before I knew it, I was being helped into his truck, and we were driving down the dirt road. I started speaking, but John silenced me with a reassuring tone. Not yet. I think I slept a bit, but the next thing I can remember is being pulled from the truck and brought into a warm house and sat in front of a computer. Keep telling the story. It's weakening them. I turned to look at the tired native man in the face. I started to cry, confused and afraid. He watched me cry for a few minutes before gripping me strongly by the face and explaining very calmly and seriously that I needed to share this. He said he was going to explain things as he knew them once I updated you. I don't know, but the running conversation here is helping. In some way, maybe we're getting closer to finding the truth. Keep it up, everyone. I feel safe for now, but I know the monster is out there looking for me. Wish me luck. <laughs>